In this video we're going to show you how to take a full 3D model and unwrap it so that you can create toolpaths in the software to cut it on a rotary axis. We're going to start with the wrap job setup then we'll show you how to import and orient the 3D object, bring that into the software, build a component so that you can create a cylinder that will hold the part in place and then calculate the toolpaths to cut it. Let's begin by opening a new copy of the software so as with any job we plan to cut on a rotary axis, the way that we set up our part is to go up to the gadgets drop down, choose wrapping and then from the wrapping drop down menu we're going to choose wrapped job setup. Our job is going to be cut out of a piece of material which is 12 inches long, 4 inches in diameter in the cylinder we're cutting into. So you can see there I have inches checked for the units. And the orientation for our particular machine is that it will take Y values and wrap them around the X. So the X will remain linear, but Y will be converted into rotary. Now that will only be done at the post-processing stage. The alternative um, orientation you might have on your machine is that the X values are wrapped around Y. So Y remains linear and X gets wrapped around the cylinder. And that would uh, require you to choose the second option here. So we're choosing the x-axis, staying linear, wrapping y-values, xy drawing option is going to go in the lower left corner and we're going to set the cylinder axis off um, the bottom of the block or the centre of our cylinder as it will be in this case when it's wrapped. For this job is a simple cylindrical wrap when we do our unwrapping that's typically going to be the setup we use and now I can go ahead and hit OK and the software will take those values and automatically create me a three axis environment that fits that size. So our X axis will be 12 inches long and our Y axis will be the equivalent length of unwrapping a four inch diameter cylinder. Now we're ready to import our 3D model so I'm going to click on the modeling tab, click on the icon to import a component and the file that I'm going to bring in here is a 3DM file that was created in the Rhino software. Now this is actually one of their training examples so we're not able to supply this data for you but if you watch this video then you should be able to apply these principles to your own files. So here I'm going to select this, click on open and the software will automatically put me into the 3D view environment. At this stage what I need to do is orient the part so that it will unwrap correctly and make sure that the size is appropriate for the part that we're planning to cut. If I come over and look at the form here I can see the model size at the moment is very large. That's also indicated to me by the fact my work area is shown with this red square that we can see here and the model obviously looks significantly larger than that. And that's most likely because um, this was created in millimetres and um, so if I hit the scale millimetre to inches button I should see those values update and become more appropriate in this case. So I can see this is a little bit longer than 12 inches here. Now I can see that's resized against my work area there but I've only got a 12 inch cylinder so I do need to reduce the size of this down a little bit more. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to override this value and enter a size of 11 in X and hit apply and have that scale down even a little bit further. Now we've adjusted the size, let's think about the orientation of our part. To help us see this I'm going to go up to view and choose the option to draw origin. That's going to draw this indicator where the positive X axis is indicated by the red arrow, the Y axis by the green arrow and the z-axis by the blue arrow as you can see there. When we set up the orientation for our part we need to imagine a cylinder running along the linear axis of our machine and we need to ensure that that passes through the centre of the piece that we want to unwrap. So if we look at this job we can see that our linear axis is along x so I need to orient the handle here so that that x axis passes through the centre of the job which in this case is going to require me to tilt that down a bit. If we were to have a machine where the linear axis was along y or the green arrow then I need to first rotate the part around 90 degrees and I could do that in the initial orientation stage of the form here and make sure that I first got the direction correct for that before I started worrying about tilting it. 
As I said, in this case, we have the direction correct. What I want to do is just tilt the part down here. So I'm going to click on the icon to look along the Y axis. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. What I want to do is some interactive rotation of the model. So we're going to look in this section, but I only want to rotate around the Y axis. So I'm going to click that option there. I'm going to click in the 3D view now and drag the mouse down, which is allowing me to tilt that part down. As I say, what I'm looking to do is put an imaginary cylinder through the middle of this part. So I've tilted that so that it's now straight with that axis. And now what I want to do is get that in the center. So if we click on the middle button, that will just move that down there. And then if I just click on interactive rotation back to manipulating the view, so I don't keep changing the model position, now I can click in the 3D view and have a look at the orientation of our part. So we can see there that our linear axis, our x-axis, is clearly passing down through the middle of our part cleanly. And so we should be ready at this stage to hit OK and unwrap it. So if we just scroll down to the bottom of the form here, I'm going to click on the OK button. And the software knows, because we're importing this 3D model into a wrap job setup, remember we set this job up using the gadget, for a wrap job setup, and so it will always offer us the option to unwrap the model. If we were to choose no, then it would just import as a regular 3D model using the options in the form. Here, because I'm going to hit yes, what the software will do now is unwrap the Y values of this, because that's how I've got the part set up, and it'll create this quite odd looking component for me, which I can see in the 3D view in the three axis environment, and also I can see that a component the same name as the 3D model that I imported here has been created in the component tree. Now I mentioned there that we've imported into a three axis environment and that's very important to understand here that we're always working essentially with a three axis part and the only time it's going to really become rotary is at the point where we save the toolpaths out and the post processor will take the moves in this case along the Y axis and it will wrap them around a cylinder and output those rotary moves to the machine. That's why we have to unwrap the model so we can see it in this 3-axis environment and work with it using our standard 3-axis toolpaths before we do that output. So the software does give us a little bit of help with this in that it allows us to display the part as if it was wrapped even though in this environment it isn't. How we do that is to make sure we're in the 3D view then we can go up to the toolpaths drop down, choose toolpath drawing, the sub menu there and then in this case, I'm going to choose to wrap Y values around X because that's the way we've got our part set up. You can see there's an alternate choice there if you have your part set up in the other direction. So here, I'm going to click wrap Y values around X and the software will show me it in a wrapped version of the 3D view. When we were setting up the job to unwrap it, I talked about the idea that you need to think of this imaginary cylinder that goes through the center of our job. At this stage we start to see why this is so important and there are two reasons really. One is that we're going to have to have a cylinder of material passing through the job which will actually be our work holding so that will go into the ends of our chuck or however the part's going to be held on our rotary axis and allow us to hold it while it's being machined. In addition, because we've brought this into a three axis environment, as we've unwrapped it, we may have lost some detail. For instance, anywhere that an undercut is created, like we've got at the back end of the handle here, the software will have to fill in with material. And that would become particularly apparent if you had something like a figurine, where perhaps you had a space in between the arm and the body, that material would get filled in. And also if you had something like a, a highly curved cabriolet leg, where the cylinder may be passed out of the job and back in again, and that would certainly create some very odd effects with a 3D model. Essentially, the software is really only going to work well if the cylinder passes completely through the center of the job. Anywhere where it doesn't, we're going to see the effects of additional material having to be added in. So that's worth thinking about with the types of jobs that you're going to do um, in the software here. What I want to be concerned with here though is the fact I've got an, a cylinder which has essentially got no thickness to it. So I need to add in a three dimensional part to our model, three dimensional component that's going to become the cylinder for my work holding in this case. So let's go back to an unwrapped view. We'll go up to toolpaths, 
toolpath drawing and switch the wrapping off. Now to add our cylinder through the center of the job I need to create a component. I'm just going to make a flat component and then just raise that up to merge through the unwrapped component that we've got here. Easiest way to do that is to come up to the model drop down and choose the add zero plane option. That creates a flat component at zero. Now with that selected I can click on the properties icon going to change it to merge so it will blend through our part and I'm going to come in and create a base height to raise this up and this is what's going to give the cylinder the um, thickness. Now because this is being wrapped around the job I only need to give um, the height here the radius of the cylinder not the diameter so if I want a diameter of one inch I'm going to put in a base height of half an inch and hit the space bar in order to apply that so there we've raised that plane up half an inch and if we just close that now and come back up to toolpaths toolpath drawing and switch the wrapped view back on again we can see how that's going to create this one inch thick cylinder around the center of our job there so hopefully that's clear the way that we've created that there and that's now going to provide us with some material that we can machine down to when we create the toolpaths and it won't end up cutting the part out of our piece of stock. So having completed our prep work we're ready to go over to the toolpaths tab so I'm going to click on the icon here and switch to the toolpaths tab and it's important to switch off the wrapped view when we're calculating toolpaths in the software. If I don't do that then it will give me a warning that I need uh, to switch off this wrapped view while I'm making my setup and calculations. So I'm just going to go up to toolpaths, toolpath drawing, switch the wrapping off there. Now I'm going to check my material setup so I'm going to click on the set button and here if you'll remember these values will be picked up from our original wrap job setup. So we specified a cylinder diameter of four inches, so that's a block thickness of two inches that's going to be wrapped around. Z0 is going to be in the center of our cylinder, or as we think of it in a three axis setup, the bottom of the block. And the XY datum is in the lower left corner at the moment. Now in some cases you may want the zero datum to be effectively on the middle or the top uh, part of the job as it was unwrapped here, in which case you'd want to enter an offset value. Just to show you how you would do that, you would check the use offset button and what you'd want to do is offset this down negatively by half the distance of the y axis. So to do that I'd type in minus y divided by 2 and then hit the equals button and you can see now that that's moved my x y zero position into the middle of the y axis of the part as we look at it in this view here. And that step's certainly not essential but really just down to how you want to set the part up. Next if we look at the model positioning material it's very important this is all the way down to the bottom so gap below should be zero and then rapid gaps above the material I just need to make sure they're appropriate values and also then the home start position will need to be raised up in this case because I've got material thickness of 2 inches and Z0 set at the bottom so that needs to be over 2 inches for it to be a safe value so I'm going to put in 2.5 inches and go ahead and hit OK. Now we're ready to calculate our first toolpath, in this case a 3D roughing toolpath. So I'm going to come up and click on the icon for the 3D roughing in this case I'm going to use the same tool to rough as I am to finish to save me having to do a tool change. I haven't got a very detailed model so I don't need to go down to a particularly small tool so I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose for both operations. So let's hit the select button, choose the quarter inch ball nose tool from the tool database and hit OK. Then I'm going to click on the edit button and override some of the parameters because this is a roughing operation. I'm going to set the pass depth to be a quarter of an inch and the step over go from a finishing step over of 10% to a more appropriate roughing step over of 40%. I'm going to take just the default settings for the rest of the values and hit OK. Next I want to machine the entire job area so I'm going to check the material boundary option and zero boundary vector offset. I just want to machine up to the edge of the part. 
machining allowance, which is an imaginary thickness of extra skin that will be left on the model in order to make sure I've got uh, a difference between the rough and the finish, leaving me some material to finish, making sure I don't chip the model when I do the roughing operation. So I'm going to put in a value of 0.03 of an inch for that. I'm going to do Z-level roughing in this case. I could choose to ramp in if I chose. In this case, I won't bother to check that option. I'm going to go ahead and edit the name and hit Calculate. So there the software is showing me the toolpath it's going to create. As I say, this is a three-axis toolpath until we output it using the appropriate post-processor. So in the software, we're going to preview this as we would a normal um, 3D toolpath. There we can see the result of that in three axis and now we could go up to toolpaths, toolpath drawing, switch the wrapping on and see what that roughing will look like as a wrapped toolpath there. So this is what the part would look like after I've done the roughing on my rotary machine. So let's go back up and switch the wrapping off. Now I'm going to close the preview toolpath form. I'm going to click on the icon uh, to do the 3D finishing toolpath. Again, we're going to click select for the tool. I'm going to choose the quarter inch ball nose tool and hit OK. And if we just click the edit button and check this, I can see the parameters for finishing are fine. 10% step over is good. So I'm going to hit OK there. Again, I'm going to work with the material boundary, zero boundary vector offset. And I'm going to choose to raster the part. Now the angle that you machine, both for the roughing and the finishing, is very important. With a zero raster angle, what that means is the tool will pass along the length of the part here, and then as it steps over, that's what's going to be transposed into a rotary move. So if I set a zero raster angle, the tool's going to travel down the length of my linear axis, then rotate the part round a little bit to step over and travel back up again, so on and so forth, and the same with the roughing. If I change the raster angle to 90 degrees so that it's in effect going along the y-axis, what that means is the tool is act, or the machine is actually going to rotate the part around as the tool travels up here in order to cut it. Then it will step over linearly. Then it will rotate the part back again in order to cut up in this direction. So raster angle, very, very important when you're doing the rotary. Um, typical setup may well be along the linear axis, but it very much depends on your part and your setup. So here I'm going to go for a zero degree angle and we'll just edit the name and hit calculate so we can see what that toolpath is going to look like. Software will automatically open the preview toolpath form. We can click on the button there. We can see that being animated through. If we want to speed that up, I could undraw the tool. And again, what this is doing is showing me the toolpath in the three axis environment. At the end of this, we'll be able to switch on the wrapped view again to see what the part will look like when it's actually cut with the toolpath that's been output using the rotary post processor. So once that's complete, toolpaths, toolpath drawing, wrap Y values again, and there we can see there is our finished part and how that's going to look when it's machined. Now if we're happy with that, I can hit the close button on the preview and we'd be ready to output those two toolpaths. We'd select the toolpath we want to output, click on the save toolpath icon. And this is the stage where it's absolutely essential that the post processor I choose from the list here has been configured to work with a rotary machine. So if I come down and we find the uh, Mac 3 or Mac 2 and Mac 3 post processors here, you can see there are a selection that have the word wrap in them. In this case, what I would want to do is choose the one that's going to wrap Y to A. Okay, because the Y axis is what I want to be wrapped around, so it's going to wrap Y onto what's going to be the A axis, which is a typical designation in G code for a rotary axis. By choosing this post processor that has that rotary machining built into it, uncheck output all visible toolpaths. So it takes my selected toolpath here and click the save toolpaths button. I should see this form here if I've chosen a wrapped post processor. So it's going to tell me what's going to happen, the diameter of the cylinder, where the center of the job is. That's all being picked up from how we set the part up originally. If that all looks correct, then I can hit OK. I can give this a name 
save it and then I'm going to have the toolpath that I'll be able to run in order to do the roughing for my part and I would just do the same operation for the finishing. So at this stage I'm not going to save this file because we're not able to share this data as I mentioned at the start of the presentation. However you have seen the process for setting up a wrap job, importing a 3D model, orienting it, unwrapping it, adding a flat planar shape to create the cylinder that goes through the middle and then calculating the toolpaths on it. It's important to note that you don't just have the option to use 3D toolpaths in this process, you could combine that with appropriate 2D and 2.5D toolpaths as well. And that concludes this video.